Hello, my name is Kyla. I'm a summer intern at Grass River Natural Area. Uh, you may have recognized me around the center this summer or at the Roving Naturalist tent, but today I'm here for a new micro class. So one of the best parts of summer is getting to enjoy any one of the lakes that our region has to offer. Um, but if you've been swimming in shallow water, you may have also experienced one of the not so great parts, which is an itchy red rash. Um, but those bumps are what I am here to talk about today because um, they're not actually a rash. They're what happens if you get a dying um, parasite in your skin. Um, gross, I know. <laughs> Schistosome worms are parasitic worms that live all around the world causing a number of different diseases. But in Michigan, the ones that cause swimmers itch, there are 12 to 15 species. The most common one being Trichobazaria stachnicola, which infects uh, common merganser ducks. So a lot of people think that geese are the real problem, but it's really the common merganser. Um, so how do these tiny little parasitic worms end up infecting humans and making us all itchy? Well, let's take a look at the life cycle. The adult worm lives in the bloodstream of its host, um, usually near its intestine, because it can live there for a couple of couple of years. And they're laying in that time, they're laying hundreds of thousands of eggs into its host's digestive system. Um, and those eggs eventually make it into the water column um, through the host species. Ew. Um, and those eggs, once they're in the water column, hatch within the hour. Once the eggs hatch, they are now called Miracidia larvae. Um, the Miracidia do not eat in this time, but they are free swimming, so they can move around wherever they want. They live for around 24 to 48 hours, and in that time, they must find a new suitable host, um, otherwise they'll perish. Once the Miracidia find the appropriate intermediate host, which is always a snail, um, they enter into its body, where they can enter the next stage of the life cycle. Once inside the snail, the spores, <laughs> the Maricidia elongates and becomes a reproductive sac known as a sporocyst. Um, and the sporocysts begin to multiply through asexual reproduction, creating a huge population of thousands of sporocysts within the snail's body. After approximately one month, the uh, sporocysts metamorphose into their final larval stage, the cesariae, and then together they burrow out of the snail and re-enter re the water column. And again, they are free-living uh, larvae that do not feed, so they have only 24 to 48 hours where they need to find their final definitive host, otherwise they'll die. Okay, this free-living stage is where swimmer's itch gets its technical name, Cesterial dermatitis. Um, and it's also where things get a little hairy and why sometimes humans get infected. In a perfect world, the Cesterial uh, larvae would infect their true host, which would be like a mergans or duck or something. And once they get inside, they would be able to find their way into the bloodstream and turn into their adult form, the worm. Um, and then start the life cycle all over again. But it's not a perfect world and sometimes the larvae make mistakes and you might be splashing around enjoying the water and they might infect you instead. But they don't get very far, they only get into your skin before they die and that triggers your immune system because a dead parasite is definitely not supposed to be in your skin. So those red itchy bumps you get called papules are what happens, your immune system's response to those dead parasites in your skin. So each bump is where uh, one of those one mil less than one millimeter long parasites infected you. They're actually 1 80th of an inch long. Since it is an allergic reaction to the parasite, uh, some people will be more sensitive than others, and continued exposure can actually make you have a stronger reaction to it in the future. So, if you want to avoid swimmer's itch, uh, number one thing you can do is make sure you towel off as soon as you're done in the water and dry off really well, or you can rinse off with a shower. Uh, the other thing you can do is make sure that you're not feeding waterfowl in the area that you're going to be swimming in, because um, they may be carrying schistosomes within their bodies. Um, if you want any more information 
or resources. Uh, the Michigan Swimmers Itch Partnership has really good um, information for you or your lake association um, and their website is msip.org. Thank you for tuning in for another uh, Grass River Natural Area micro class.